Have you heard you can use photoreal materials in SketchUp? We're talking about materials with reflections and realistic surface details all without the need for rendering software. With this news, you're probably wondering, do the new photoreal materials replace the need for additional rendering software? I'm Alex Oliver, lead instructor at SketchUp School. And in this video, we'll break down the pros and cons of photoreal materials versus photorealistic rendering software to help you make the best choice for your particular situation. Before we dive into the pros and cons of photoreal materials, let's quickly cover how they work. First, you can enable the photoreal face setting in your styles dialog. It will turn on the new environments feature that will be used to drive the reflections you see in your materials. Then paint a material onto a surface as you've always done in SketchUp. Orbit around and you'll see your materials now have way more realistic looking reflections and surface details. Up until now, there was only so much you could do to get your SketchUp models to look good for presentations. If you needed more realistic renderings, you either had to add a realistic rendering extension to SketchUp, or you would have to import your SketchUp model into a separate rendering application, and then use that tool to add realistic lighting and materials. So the big question is, do photoreal materials replace the need for an additional rendering extension or application? There are two scenarios where photoreal materials might be the better choice. First, if you need something more realistic than you currently get out of SketchUp, but it doesn't need to be 100% photo realistic. Or second, you don't have the time or money to invest in buying and learning the rendering software. In either of these two cases, photo real materials might be the perfect next step for you. You have to do very little extra work than you already do in SketchUp, and you'll get a big improvement in the visuals that you can show your clients. To be clear, the images aren't truly photo realistic, and we'll talk about why that is in a moment. But if the improvement is good enough for you, it's the quickest and easiest path to more realism. Even if this sounds like you, keep watching as it'll be important to know about a few limitations you're likely to run into. And all of the limitations boil down to one key thing. Even with the introduction of photoreal materials, there's still no realistic lighting being added to your SketchUp model. In order to get renderings with realistic lighting, you still need to rely on a photorealistic rendering extension or application. Because of this, there are seven key scenarios we should talk about where photoreal materials will fall short when compared to photorealistic rendering software. Let's start with number one, your 3D model doesn't impact reflections. In the real world, surface reflections take into account everything in your environment, not just the sky in the far background. However, with photoreal materials, the reflections are hardwired to show only the environment image that you choose in the new environments dialog. That looks strange when you're expecting to see other aspects of your model in the reflections. This limitation is closely related to the next issue. Number two, your 3D model doesn't obscure reflections. This is really just a continuation of the last point, but it is worth pointing out specifically. If the 3D model should be obscuring reflections of the environment, it can't because those reflections don't actually see your 3D model. This becomes really apparent for interiors, where you would expect walls and ceilings to block the sky and background in the environment outside from showing up in the reflections of your materials. Now, if you can make do with the issues we've discussed about reflections so far, it will be important for you to know about this next limitation. Number three, photoreal materials don't support refraction. While photoreal materials have introduced metalness, roughness, normal, and ambient occlusion settings for visualizing more realistic looking materials, this isn't a complete list. One big missing setting is refraction, which is critical for displaying materials realistically where light bends or refracts as it passes through a material. So if you need to create realistic renderings that include glass, water, or other liquids, you can't get something that's truly realistic with photoreal materials you would need photorealistic rendering software instead. Beyond the reflections and refractions of the surfaces in your model, let's cover the remaining lighting specific issues, starting with number four, SketchUp shadows have hard rather than soft edges. In the real world, shadows have harder or softer edges depending on the distance and size of the light source. And while the new photoreal materials and environments features in SketchUp never promise to change how shadows work, it is important to still note that SketchUp only has hard edge shadows. That's because there isn't any sunshine or lighting being cast in your model. Instead, SketchUp just calculates where to draw the shadows based on the geolocation and position of your 3D model. Now, if you're like me, you probably got excited by the new environments feature and wondered if it could help solve this problem. Unfortunately, that leads me to the next issue. Number five, environments aren't actually casting light. With the new environments dialog, it's tempting to assume that the HDR and EXR images are casting light into your scene as they would if you were using them in photorealistic rendering software. Unfortunately, they're not. Instead, they're merely being used as the background and also as what you see in the reflections of your photoreal materials. And because they aren't casting any light into the scene, you can also notice that they don't cast any shadows. And that leads me to the next issue. 
Number six, you can't add artificial lights. So we've already said that there's no lighting in SketchUp. No sunlight, no light coming from the new environments feature, and that means that you still can't add artificial lighting unless you use an additional rendering extension or application. This is critical not only for visualizing how the lighting in your project will look, but also for adding lighting to adjust the overall look and feel of your renderings. And the last issue that's indirectly related to the lack of lighting, number seven, there are no contact shadows. When things are close together, some shadowing can occur, but because of the lack of light in a SketchUp scene, we don't get those proximity or contact shadows. Now there is a hack that we can use to fake this. You can go to your face style and turn on the ambient occlusion setting. But it's not calculated with real lighting, so it can look unnatural at times. Now all of this being said, photoreal materials were never intended to replace realistic rendering software. And in fact, they can become part of the workflow. They're engineered so that the settings you configure in SketchUp could be read downstream by realistic rendering tools meaning that you can preview more realistic looking materials earlier in the design process and then have that work carry over if you need more professional looking images later. And again, when photorealism isn't necessary and you just want something quick that looks better than what you could previously get out of SketchUp, photoreal materials are pretty awesome. So what do you think? Are photoreal materials enough to improve your SketchUp renderings? Or do you still need photorealistic rendering software? Do me a favor and let me know in the comments below. Of course, there's so much more to know when it comes to using photoreal materials, as well as everything that goes into creating realistic renderings of your projects in SketchUp. And while it's definitely possible to try to learn everything on your own, if you want to invest your time wisely and avoid picking up bad habits, then I recommend checking out our video course library. It's filled with $8,700 worth of SketchUp courses exclusively for professionals, including courses that cover all of the details for how to use and get the most out of photoreal materials, as well as ones that cover realistic rendering tools such as V-Ray for SketchUp. Head over to our website and try our courses for free. And if you're not ready to take one of our courses just yet, I recommend you at least check out this video next to continue on the path to to learning SketchUp. Also, if you need help choosing the right rendering tool for your particular needs, send us a message and an instructor will be happy to give you advice. I've added a link in the description that you can use to contact us. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. And until next time, happy sketching.